I spoke with Tim Maloney, partner at the international law firm Dorsey and & Whitney, and, they, and also the head of the London office, and I asked him why Europe needs this banking reform and also how much Greece's falling economy impacts the entire process. We got here originally because of the crisis in 2008 and the European Commission saying this cannot be allowed to happen again in the Eurozone. There are banks that are too big to fail, there are banks that are too big to leave alone. And so they came up with proposals which uh, were going to compel banks to separate their core banking activities, their lending and their deposits, to separate those away from their investment banking arms. And, and these reforms were then promulgated in January of 2014. And since then, there's been a major tussle between the EU member states themselves, who are opposed to the reforms, the major banking lobbies who are opposed to the reforms, and now it seems Europe itself, or at least the European Central Bank, would rather the focus was on driving uh, growth, economic growth, rather than stability. We all seem to have forgotten the problems we got into in 2008 with Lehman, and in our case, with Northern Rock. I just want to ask you about the Greek banks. Um, are they OK? They're, they're in a crisis. They, they've run out of money. Uh, they, Greece itself is now dependent wholly on European Central Bank funding. The banks themselves, two of the major four banks, have already gone to the European Central Bank for emergency support. Their share prices collapsed when the non-austerity government was elected. Uh, they are desperate for ECB funding, and they will need not only this bailout, but they'll need further bailouts uh, if, if they are to survive and if Greece is to survive. A lot of people have, have blamed Greece, not for the problems they've had, but because of the problems of Greece, that has delayed sort of this uh, discussion that's desperately needed in Europe to move forward on these banking reforms. Now that Greece has sort of a, an extra timeline, if you want, things seem a little calmer in southern Europe, do, do you think we'll finally get some traction? Do, we, do you think we'll finally get some agreement with people like you uh, being on television, saying how important it is to get this done? I mean, this is long overdue. It is certainly long overdue, but the focus at the moment seems to be on driving economic growth rather than financial stability. The stability problems seems to have been, seem to have been forgotten almost in, 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 this, in the concerns to actually build the economy and, and to have strong banks that are capable of lending. And so to do that, uh, the banks are saying, well, don't take away my investment banking arm because you'll take away the profit from which I will be able to lend to your struggling economies. Yeah. Uh, let me just take Switzerland as an example. I mean, they've tried to distance themselves um, uh, outside of the EU as well. Uh, but it, it's hard. If you're going to have a regulation, everybody, and I mean everybody, whether you're in the EU officially or unofficially, or all the neighbors, everybody's got to agree to a basic set of rules and principles. Can we get there at least? Well, we'll get to the lowest common denominator, in my view, which is some form of framework that will deal with banks in crisis. What we will not get to are the much more systemic structural reforms that the socialist MEPs and the green MEPs say are desperately needed in order to bring stability and to avoid another Lehman crisis.